So, today's tough topic is about debt. Now, this is kind of a, a difficult concept because people don't like uh, talking about money. They really don't like it. Um, I mean, when you are when you go to church and the pastor's talking about, you know, giving and stuff like that, just people don't really like it. Especially people don't like it if they have a problem with their finances. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna. I'm not really gonna look at this um, from any other way except for as it applies to Christians and in a biblical kind of concept here. So uh, I'll lay it on out. It's all out there for you. First off, debt is a financial and emotional strain. Anytime that you're um, you have a debt, it, it, it's going to be something that causes a lot of uh, stress. It's going to be something that causes a lot of um, just. It's going to preoccupy your time a lot, um, and, and when you enter into debt, you have to keep that in mind. Is it really some, is is that really a heartache, a burden that you really want to carry? Um, second, um, debt is kind of hard to get out of, which is very closely associated to the first point there. Um, there's some things that we do that are just absolutely absolutely stupid. Um, one is taking a, a, the title to your car. And going and getting quick cash uh, while they hold on to your um, title—I forget what that's called—but um, you know the quick cash places, the in, the interest charge on those kinds of places is just it just wow, it's it's bad. Um, another thing that people do is the rent to own thing, like um, I can't say specific places, but oftentimes you'll end up paying much. First off, the selling price is much more expensive than you would in just buying it. And secondly, um, it can be repossessed, which isn't great. <laughs> and then um, besides all that, then there's the issue um, that with how much interest you pay, um, so you overpay two ways. You overpay first off because this item is sold for more expensive than it should be sold. Let's say a $300 gaming system goes for $500. And then because of how long it takes you to pay, that also means that you had to pay a lot of interest which means it's going to be even more than $500. Some places actually penalize you for paying stuff off too soon. So really, before you sign any kind of a contract or get involved with loans or borrowing money, just make sure you know all of the fine print and understand stuff. If you don't understand it, don't sign it. Um, a lot of times, you know, they try and pressure you. Like when you're trying to buy a car, for instance, they just try and push you, oh, this is a really good deal, you know, whatever. Don't be afraid to, um, to argue for a better price. And if the price is non-negotiable and it sucks, we'll go somewhere else. Or just don't get it. I mean, either or. But when you buy stuff on debt, you really don't have options. And people who are in debt typically don't shop around. I mean, it's just, it's just a thing. Now, by debt, I'm talking about debt generally, like credit card debt. So that brings us to point number three. Um, watch out with buying anything on a credit card. Only spend money on a credit card if you already have the cash in your bank. Well, if I already had the cash, I wouldn't spend my use my credit card. Then you shouldn't own a credit card. You shouldn't be buying stuff that you don't have money for. Um, well, they gave me this much credit. Yeah, credit really is just a nice way of saying, how would you like for us to own you? Credit <laughs> really doesn't mean much of anything, and credit cards won't even up your up your um, uh, FICO score, your your, your credit score. Uh, credit cards won't even up your up your credit score um, really at all. It just not. They can hypothetically, but ultimately, no, not really. Um, Dave Ramsey actually talks about credit cards a lot. He doesn't. He, he encourages people to just shred their credit, credit cards, and honestly, that's not a bad idea. Um, you you can come out the winner with credit cards if you have self control. Uh, one way you can do this is if you have a cash back card, um, then you just Buy whatever you already have money for, then pay it off on the credit card at the end of every month. Do not go a month without paying off your credit card entirely. And then the bank will be basically paying you to use their credit card. However, if you get in a rut of you know buying stuff that you don't have the money for, you're gonna, it's going to be a problem. And it's going to take you a long time to get out because not only do you have to pay your regular bills, but then you have to pay your accumulated debt plus the interest on the accumulated debt. So that's three payments instead of just the one payment. It's just kind of messy. Um, keep that in mind. So <clears throat> sometimes um, offers will seem really good, but they're very misleading. Keep an eye on that. Um, you really want to – there's just a lot of misleading rates. <clears throat> um, 
oh, zero dollars down, you know, or whatever. And it's like, oh, well, actually, after two years, you know, there's this big problem. Or uh, balloon payments. Oh, it's only you don't have to pay for the first two years. Well, yeah, but then at the end of those two years, you have to have all the money and pay it in it in its entirety, or you completely, you know, have this huge bill and all this stuff. And you know, just watch out for stuff for that. Um, also, credit cards are oftentimes used just to be greedy and, and covet things. You know, oh, well, I don't have the money for that. But instead of just working hard and saving up my money and planning my finances, I'm just going to go ahead and buy it. Well, that's not really smart. Now, as it applies to God, that's not very wise. You know, God's given you so much money to do something with or so much time or so much whatever. And it's not up to us to waste our money on things that we can't afford. So um, also be aware of uh, financial basics. Don't uh, don't spend money you don't have. You know, get uh, get pay tithes. Um, you know, make sure you understand what the lingo means behind the contract. If you don't understand what a contract means, don't sign it. And be aware of the, just the financial basics. You know, uh, what is interest? How is it figured? Is it figured by how much time you? I mean, by how? Is it figured daily or monthly or annually? Is it figured off of how much you owe or what? Um, when you go to college, what kind of, what does it mean to get you know this loan versus this loan? Um, well, you know, if you don't know what the difference is between your options, don't sign them. Another big mistake that people make is don't co-sign for loans. Um, the Bible says that the people who do this are not wise. Um, if you read through Proverbs, you'll be surprised at how many things it has to say about money. One of the big things it says is, you know, if, if you don't work, you're not going to – you're going to be in want. Or it says, you know, people who are um, – don't have money are people who uh, spend spend their money on, on all the pleasures and desires they want. Well, if you spend all your money on pleasures and desires, you're not going to have any money. One good example is paying for – paying to rent a place that you can't afford. Um, going and buying coffee from a coffee place every morning, that stuff's expensive. Um, going out to eat a lot. Um, I mean, just go down the list. <clears throat> so don't co-sign for loans. Um, now, there are some debts that are mostly unavoidable. Um, not entirely, but a lot of the time. Uh, some of these can, in can include um, a mortgage. It, you can hypothetically buy a house uh, without paying for more, without getting a mortgage. You can just buy it in cash, but it's very difficult to do that, and it requires a lot of planning and a lot of perseverance. And you really need to know what you're doing. Um, don't bother wasting your time putting money in a savings account because savings account savings accounts don't earn you interest on what you're saving as quickly as money becomes less valuable. So basically what I'm saying is money over the course of time becomes less valuable. Um, let's say you have $20. Well, in 100 years, that $20 isn't going to be worth as much. It's not going to buy as much as it does now. So savings accounts don't give you enough interest on whatever money you put in there to pay off, to, to add up to... In other words, when you put money in a savings account, it actually becomes less valuable quicker than it becomes uh, more more of it in there. So if that kind of makes sense. I, I'm trying to say things in a way where if you don't know finances, you can know what I'm saying, but it's kind of a little bit difficult. Um, if you are middle class or above, Dave Ramsey was, is great. If you are lower class, Dave Ramsey is really not going to help you out that much. Um, it just won't really apply to a lot of what you're looking at. Um, Car uh, car payments are a great example of what not to what not to take a debt on, um, because a car will depreciate. That means it becomes less valuable faster than you pay it off. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you buy a car brand new, within four years, it's going to be be worth a fraction of what you bought it for. But you're still going to be paying the bigger payments based off what the purchase price was. So if at all possible, try to buy used cars. Um, you don't have to buy crappers or you know clunkers, but maybe maybe a little bit older than maybe a little bit older than four or five years. 
Um, so remember that cars do depreciate uh, pretty quickly, and and you know it, there is a lot of good things that happen by paying cash, having the money to pay for something. If you have the money to pay for something and you go to a car dealership, they're going to say, hey, we aren't going to budge on this price. And you say, okay, but I've got the money right here, and this is what I'm going to give you for it. If you don't want that, then I'm going to go somewhere else. I mean, cars salesmen aren't stupid. Um, they might think that they can get the one up on you. You see them do this a lot with women. They think that women don't know what they're talking about, and they just assume that women are stupid. So, you know, if if you got someone doing that to you, just make sure you actually do know what you're talking about, and then go in there and, and I mean, own the place. The salesmen shouldn't be able to talk down to you, and they'll try and get you to sign up for something real quick. You know, but ask questions and, and make sure that they go along with what, with what you're wanting. Are you wanting some kind of a... Um, uh, a, de a warranty, you know. Okay, well, what happens if I drive this this car out of here and in five months it breaks down? Well, what's going to happen? Or if I drive it off and instantly it breaks down? You know, these are things that are wor worth noting. Um, also, another big mistake uh, with with debts is going to college for a degree that you don't need, and then you spend many many years paying for something that you don't even use. This is totally avoidable. Totally avoidable. All you have to do is don't go to college unless you actually absolutely have to go to college. Well, what I mean by that? Well, it's like this. You can go to a trade school and become like an electrician. First off, it doesn't take four years. Second off, it's way less expensive. And you can actually have a job that quick. You start start, um, uh, start an apprenticeship under somebody and then go and get licensed and you know be able to do it by yourself. I mean that's that, that's relatively cheap. And you've got a career just like that, that easy. Um, or you can get a job that a lot of jobs don't even require college degrees. Then a lot of times people get college degrees in things that they don't even need, like let's say puppeteering. What are you going to do with a degree in puppeteering? Nothing. I mean, it's just it's not going to pay off. Um, there's just a lot of jobs that are kind of dying out anyways because of technology and stuff. So you really don't want to get a job and get a degree for a job that won't exist in five years because if it takes you four years to get the degree, you see what I'm saying. Um, so don't go to college unless you, unless you need to have a plan. You shouldn't go that far in debt if you don't have a plan. You don't have to go to college. I mean, there are, uh, there are other options, but, you know, just make sure that you know what you're doing before you spend that much money. Um, because you don't, you don't know how many people I see who they don't have money, uh, to pay off their, their debts. And so they get a job and, and most of their paycheck goes to pay off old school loans that they have thousands and thousands of dollars in. I mean, me and my I went I met my wife at college and she didn't finish her degree and I had to pay off a large sum for her degree uh, for her uh, debt and she didn't even get a degree. I did finish my degree, <clears throat> and I'm happy that I did. But in hindsight, there are a lot of cheaper ways I could have gone about it, and I could have gotten a lot of the same knowledge without having to get the degree. And so a lot of it was just like eh, more of for vanity than for practicality. It just, you know, didn't make sense. So anyways, uh, but here's here's the real kicker. As a Christian, um, if we do not manage our finances very well, this is often more of um, indicative. It, it, shows, it shows that there's a bigger issue. Um, oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes, you know, maybe we haven't let God um, run our finances. Uh, maybe, um, maybe we've got undealt with emotional or mental problems, you know, money is not going to make you any happier. And even if it does, it's a temporary high because money is more of a distraction than fulfillment. Um, the Bible talks about repeatedly about how wise people, you know, a lot of the, most of these things that I'm talking about are mentioned in Proverbs, uh, really all over the place. So giving you a scripture reference would be mostly pointless. I can just say, this is from Proverbs. And you can kind of just fill in, the, fill in the blanks by reading through the book of Proverbs. Um, if you read through one a day, you can finish it in a month. Um, the Bible does this contrast in Proverbs where it says, okay, wise people give, whereas foolish people are in debt. Well, what if I'm not in debt, but I'm not giving? See what I mean? It, it, it's, driving, it, it's driving a contrast there. First off, you should be giving to people who are in need. I mean, absolutely, you know, give to charities. Get to St. Jude's. I mean, there's there's a worthy cause right there. Um, but then also there's a the point that wise people, they aren't, um, they handle what they have 
well to where they don't have to get into debt. They get out of debt, they run from debt, they, they avoid debt at all costs, and they own what they have, and they, they don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. Whereas foolish people, they want everything. They want everything, and so if they want it, they buy it. Well, so they're in debt. That's how that works. You can't live however you want and spend your money however you want and then have enough money. Um, and once again, being wise with your money is not about being is not about salvation. It's about wisdom. You know, living um, living without another chain on you is basically what we're talking about here. Um, God's not going to just suddenly give up on you because you have credit card debt. Absolutely not. But He doesn't want you to live that way. Um, it's just such such a stressor, and it's not necessary. You can you can have a higher quality of life with less things and with less stress. See, we think all the things will make us happy, but it doesn't. Um, so remember that.